Hello and welcome back to Frog Boy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today, man, I think I made a terrible mistake switching from NVIDIA over to AMD with the 7900 XT. Now, I've had the 7900 XT back in my PC for a couple of days now, so I wanted to talk about some things, and I wanted to, um, yeah, I want, I want to, I want to talk about some of these differences between like the NVIDIA GPU. I mean, I have the 4070 now. I went and picked that up so I could compare it to the 7800 XT. If you're new to the channel, if you're not, if you've been here for a while and you've been following the PC content, um, I decided to buy both the mid range cards so that I could test them. You know, we'll do some long range testing for them, but I, I ran into this problem after buying the 7900 XT. And the thing is, is I don't really have like this desire to put the 4070 back in the PC that often. Like I, I just don't, um, I, I, I put it in there like, okay, so here's the thing. Like I have to guilt myself into putting the 4070 into the PC so that I can test some stuff, you know, or, or I have to hype myself up like, yeah, man, we're going to test this ray tracing and all of this stuff. And, and then I put it in there and I'm like, and, and then I sit here and here's my, here's my whole conundrum. I'll sit here and I'll be thinking, I'm like, okay, it's back in. What do I want to, what do I want to test? And then I'll look at all my list of games and I'm like, I'm like, dang, dude, there's like what cyberpunk and Alan Wake two and, and like maybe a couple of other games. And I'm just like, I'm like, it really can't be that short of a list. I mean, I have like all of the newest games out pretty much. Um, some of them I do have on the console, but, but I mean, for like the ones that are actually like worth playing right now, the, and this is a big thing. The ones that are actually like worth playing, I've already played. Like I've already completed them. I mean, I got I got Avatar right now, but Avatar's an AMD game. Um, Cyberpunk, you know, I'm I've 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 been playing Cyberpunk since it came out. So I mean, like, yeah, getting in there and looking at it. I mean, like, why why would I why would I choose that ray tracing when I can have super high frames with my 7900 XT on that game. See, there, there's these these things that just keep coming up and I'm just like, wow, dude, this AMD experience has really soured things in for Nvidia for me. Like they I I just do not see Nvidia the way that a lot of people do still. I I I just don't. There's a lot of people that are still starstruck and in that honeymoon phase and feeling like, yeah, I got the best and for me, for me, and see, and see, here's the thing, guys. For me, that that kind of that kind of ended pretty quickly with like the whole Nvidia ray tracing and all of that stuff. Because I started with the 30 series cards, and I could barely ever use the ray tracing to a to a point that made sense. Where it's like, yeah, man, I can use ray tracing and have really high frame rates. It was, it was almost like most of the time when I would turn on the RT on the 3080, I'd get like a stuttering mess on, on a lot of games. Um, so, so to me, it wasn't worth it. I'd turn it off and it would be smooth. I'd be like, all right, cool. This is how I'm playing the game. So in my eyes, you know, that whole freaking hype thing for the ray tracing has already come and gone. Uh, when I look at when I was sitting here just a few minutes ago before making this video and, and that's kind of what prompted this video is I was sitting there and I'm playing Avatar and I'm using the unobtainium settings on the 7900 XT and I'm out there in the world and I've got just everything maxed out. I'm playing at 1440p and, and I'm and I'm and I'm actually playing, you know, because I've I've got a high enough frame rate, you know, above 60 and it's maintaining, you know, pretty much above 60 it does drop into the 55s every once in a while. You know, I mean, I get into a certain spot and that'll hit 55, but you know, because of VRR and G sync and all of that stuff, obviously you're not going to feel that. Um, so, so it's just a smooth experience that I'm sitting here and, I, and I'm enjoying that. And then I'm thinking, you know, I'm like, what, why do I, why, why would anybody need an NVIDIA GPU? Like, why would, why would they need to spend significantly more money? Like, to go anywhere above what I've got right now, you need what? Like a, a 4070 Ti or, or a 4080 to get a better experience than the 7900 XT? So, I mean, like, why, like, why would you spend that much more money for significantly, like, I mean, for slightly more power? To become, if you got a 4080, slightly more power, 
you, you, be, you definitely have some better ray tracing experience but i mean that's like that's almost like five hundred dollar difference right now. You can you can find the seventy nine hundred XT for for about for about freaking eight hundred bucks or so, maybe less, maybe like seven or whatever. So I look at that and I'm like, gosh dang man, the experience that I get on a seventy nine hundred XT being able to run this game with the unobtainium at fourteen forty p and get above sixty, like I would say probably ninety three percent of the time you're above sixty and you never go below fifty. So, so like you, you, your experience is pretty much feels like a 60 FPS experience. You go all the way up into the eighties with that though, of course. And then you can, you, you, um, I mean like obviously utilizing FSR three and frame generation and all of that stuff. Cause I mean, obviously if you're, if you're playing on a 4080 and you want to use those features, you're, you're going to be using your frame gen and stuff. So that's kind of the way I look at it coming across with these GPUs is you will be utilizing this technology to these tools to, to make your experience better. And when I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this game, I, I, I feel absolutely spoiled with the 7900 XT when it comes to the 4070. And, you know, I mean, the 7800 XT does a pretty dang good job at like keeping pretty close. Um, at 1440p with unobtainium on the 7800 XT, I'm about 45 to, to 60 frames a second in that depending on the spot so i mean that one there is still technically playable with unobtainium you know because you're above 30 frames a second as long as you could be above 30 i still consider that playable but i mean when you're playing that with the unobtainium and you're looking at that and you're seeing like the you know like the better water surfaces you're seeing like some of the better, you know, just, just overall, like, like the detail, like not very much. I mean, I would much rather be playing it on just ultra settings than getting like double my frame rate. But I mean, like, why would you need a super expensive NVIDIA card to play this game? That, and that's what I, and that's what I don't like, like that, that's what I don't understand. I mean, there, there are people out there that are just so belligerent when it comes to these nvidia graphics cards they, they are so belligerent that they they are the best amd is trash amd has bad drivers amd this amd crash that every everywhere you look you know i mean like you see somebody doing like an amd graphics card review and they're sitting there telling you that oh man i don't know if i could give up the ray tracing and stuff for that like what ray tracing how many, what games are you out there that you need your ray tracing for the AMD just, the, the, what, what, what games? What is there? What is there to play? Tell me, like seriously, I want to know what is there out there right now that 100% needs that experience? Because I've seen Alan Wake with full path tracing and ray tracing and everything on the 4070. And then I seen it. And I beat the game on my 7900 XT and it looked incredible and it played smoothly and I was well over 100 frames a second. And then I look back at what I'm getting out of the, out of the 4070 at like 45 frames a second or so, or maybe a little bit more. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm scratching my head and I'm thinking, I'm like, dang, dude, would I have rather played this game like this or like that? You, you know what I mean? And, and, and I keep coming back to the same exact answer every single time. AMD is just a better, is just a better choice. Absolutely a better choice. You get far more bang for your buck. And, and I get it. I get it in the PC world. You know, everybody likes to pretend that they got the best or that they, they have. No, it, it's plain and simple math. If you play video games and you buy an AMD card, you're getting more bang for your buck. If you play video games and you buy an NVIDIA GPU, you are getting what you can afford. <laughs> and <we're, laughs> let's face it, if you buy the AMD card, you're going to get more bang for your buck than you are on, on any of them NVIDIA cards. The only two really good cards to buy from NVIDIA are probably a 4080 or 4090. Now, while I'm enjoying my AMD experience, NVIDIA in a few days is about to announce more cards that are either going to a make you feel stupid for buying the graphics card that you bought because they're going to come out around the same price point this these are the rumors 
and they're going to bring out the super line and it's going to be at about the same price as the cards you've already bought. So that there's going to make you mad. That there's going to make you be like, what the freak, man? You're already going to feel dumb for wasting your money on something when you could have had a better product. Or they're going to come out and they're going to be super expensive and you're still going to be like, oh man, I, I should have, I should have bought that. The, the, uh, the hamster wheel is what I like to call it with NVIDIA is where I don't think that I don't, for, well, at least the people that come on the channel and stuff like that. Like, I just don't feel like these guys can sit still for like 10 minutes. Like they're, they're, there's always something better and they, they, they always got to think about that. And they're, they're always being like calculating and all kinds of stuff about, man, wouldn't it be nice to just have an AMD card that you can buy at the beginning of the generation and you can use until you decide you want to buy another card and don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I got to go buy another card. And like, wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> like, seriously, wouldn't that be awesome if you could just buy something and have peace of mind knowing that like, okay, yeah, dude, like it's going to get to the end of the generation, but I got 16 gigs of VRAM with my, with my 7800 XT. I'll probably be able to push it a little bit farther. Whereas with the 40, 70, 12 gig, you're like, oh man, I already got an upgrade. Well, it was good while it lasted. Oh yay, at least I get better better ray tracing with the with the 50, 70. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my gosh, man. It just feels like a never ending, a never ending nightmare when it comes to, to, to NVIDIA. So let's get back to this 7900 XT experience, man. I was gonna put the uh, I was gonna put the 4080 back in or 4070 back in today, but then I got thinking. I'm like, what what do I want to play on that? And and I had to ask myself. I'm like, dude, you've already checked out The Witcher Three. You already know how that runs. It runs it runs incredible on your 7900 XT. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, Cyberpunk, you've already looked at that. It, it got a patch. It's running a little bit better on the 7900 XT now. I mean, it's definitely giving you, you know, I mean, you can play it with the ray tracing, all of that stuff and enjoy it. So I'm like, okay, uh, Alan Wake 2, I'm probably not going to replay Alan Wake 2 for a very long time or or if I ever do. So like, what what else am I going to play, guys? What, what other reason do I have to stick the 4070 back in there um, until we get some new games? So I just said, you know what, man? Maybe I'll just keep the 7900 XT in the PC um, and wait until something else comes out. Then I'll throw in the 7800 XT. I'll throw in the 4070, do like the whole little thing. Um, probably do the 7800 XT first because it's a lot easier to just transfer that card out. Put the new one in, do what I got to do, then delete everything, put the 4070 in, run whatever I got to run with that. So I think that's pretty much like the way it's going to go. Like I love the 7900 XT, man. This thing is an absolute powerhouse. It does everything I needed to do. It's it's very smooth experience. I'm having fun with it. I'm 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 actually to tell you the truth, I'm more interested in playing around with the AMD's fluid motion frames beta that keeps getting updated and keeps getting better. And you know, sitting here with anticipation for new games coming out with FSR3, because if you haven't noticed. FSR 3 is in Avatar, Pen, Frontiers of Pandora, and it looks absolutely incredible. It's got that nice look that I like without being over sharpened, and it looks incredible. I think it looks better than DLSS, man. And I know, I know you guys are like, nothing is better than DLSS. And I'm like, like I'm like, come on, guys. It's just video games. And for me, my preferences, I like what FSR looks like on these cards and, and and it's funny that there's just so much out there to like go out of their way like these guys go out of their way to try to knock amd's prices down knock amd's tech and open tools and all of that stuff down when it's like dude seriously go look at go look at dlss it's not perfect it's not perfect and i wish everybody would quit trying to to say that it is perfect, because it's not. I mean, if you're gonna be honest, I mean, if if, if you're gonna be on, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to get somebody to buy the product that you want them to buy, at least be honest about it, man. Like seriously, I I have a forty seventy. I can see what DLSS DLSS looks like whenever I want to. It's not perfect. There's still there's still like all kinds of different artifacting and ghosting. And all of them things that people like to blame AMD for, it's still there with DLSS, depending on the game. 
So I mean, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a case by case basis with games because some games do look absolutely incredible with DLSS. Just like some games look absolutely incredible with FSR. And then, huh, hold on. Oh man, this this COVID. No, oh, it's making my mouth so dry, so fast. But when I look at this, okay, and this is my honest, my honest truth, man. I don't have nothing to gain by lying to you. I don't have nothing to gain by companies sending me free graphics cards. Um, AMD doesn't send me cards. NVIDIA doesn't send me cards. I buy my own cards. When we get into the next generation, I'll buy the 50 series. Uh, I'll buy the, I'll buy the 5070. I'll buy the, you know, the, the 8800 XT or whatever it is. I'll buy those with my own money and, and I'll cover them throughout the rest of the generation, just like I'm doing right now. So I don't have to sit here and depend on either company feeding me products. Um, so that gives me the ability to be completely honest with the way I feel about both of these um, different GPU vendors um, technologies. Uh, if Battle Mage is out by then, I will buy, I will buy a Battle Mage too. Like I will cover the mid range GPUs going forward on this channel. I think that that I think that that's probably a little bit more responsible, especially with the uh, with, with with the with the uh, Xbox community and the PlayStation community. Um, I think I think it's better to cover that that way because then when these guys decide they want to upgrade, at least they'll have somebody that's you know doing the legwork and figuring this stuff out for them. So. Yeah, I don't know. I like DLSS, but not enough to, not enough to switch back to the to the uh, to the uh, Nvidia card and use that one because that was the plan. I was going to use it for for the rest of the month, but I just have no desire. There, there's nothing to really test on there, as far as I'm concerned. Um, seventy eight hundred XT forty seventy to to me it was basically a tie. Um, the benefits that that, that the forty seventy have kind of you know kind of put it evenly with with what the 7800 xt can do um at least at 1440p at 4k you got a different it's a whole different ball game uh, we're, we're not covering those cards as 4k cards because they're not uh, i don't want to give anybody false hope but you do get a better performance on 7800 xt at 4k uh than you do with the 4070 it, it's just it's just better <clears throat> so i mean but i don't know if i would recommend buying a 7800 xt as a 4k card um unless you're unless you're okay with like low medium possibly high settings you know for for that that's probably the only way you'd be able to get longevity out of that but yeah dude as it sits what's the point of putting the 4070 back in there until i get a new game like i don't care for nvidia's control panel um I don't really care that much about DLSS. Uh, ray tracing, I've already beat everything that's got decent enough ray tracing to, to actually want to put in there. So, yeah, there's like no reason to go out of my way to switch back the um, the 7900 XT out of the PC for the 4070. Now, the 7800 XT, there's a different, I mean, that's a different story. I'll, I'll obviously be, you know, going back and forth with some of those games, but. Yeah, as it sits right now, I, I kind of made a mistake buying the 7900 XT this generation because it's <clears throat> it's making it harder for me to want to test, you know, the 7800 XT or the 4070. So it, it is what it is. So um, if you like this content, don't forget to like it, subscribe, my friends, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.